Welcome back to We Care A Lot. I'm half the podcast, Sam. I'm the other half, Mel. If you guys can't tell, if you're not watching, we are recording our first ever episode in Mel's new house. Yep. If you have been following along, then you know that Mel got a house. Welcome. Welcome. This is, sorry. <laughs> this is the living room. <laughs> We're in the living room. Welcome. Um, uh, today, we are chatting about a pretty... I don't want to say dark, but like a little bit of a darker episode. Yeah. It's just a little more intense. It's a real, but like yeah. intense conversation. And I don't think, I think we all go through, like it's all, all obscure right now. I think we're all like, as <laughs> well, you women, know the title, I think. <laughs> as women, like we all constantly like think about these things, but we don't really talk about it with one another until something scary happens. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah, dude. Why didn't you think? twice about that or right whatever. then then i'm the idiot right Not like the idiot <laughs> i'm just saying it's like also like just dating men let's just start there the things that they have no idea that's going on in women's lives i'm like oh you didn't realize we're getting verbally abused and assaulted on a random wednesday, random wednesday. <laughs> like yeah the, those things are definitely happening uh, um so maybe this is just like a quick little warning if you don't want to hear about the scary things that happen to women, maybe it'll trigger you. This might not be the episode for you. Also, I don't know how many. I think lately mm-hmm. our demographics our demographics have been on point. <laughs> this We're is weeding out the men. Weeding out the men. Do we love the men that listen, though. Don't Thank get Thank you wrong. for listening and for being in tune in with, tune with women and wanting yeah. to protect them and care for them. And respect them anyway yes if you are a hating man (laughs) specifically yes get out just please leave like this is a space a safe space for us to talk and for our listeners to engage in conversation that they can relate to and there's no need for you to be here and i don't need anybody to invalidate your yeah like invalidate any of our experiences or what we think and and believe to be true we encourage yeah. you also, if you're a hating man, to sit down and have a conversation with some women in your life. Yeah. Just saying. Just listen. Just be or quiet. Or just listen to us and be quiet. Correct. Just be quiet and listen. If you disagree, sure. Like. Cool. Mind your business then. Then you can move on, <laughs> on with your life. Just. Yes. Keep it moving. Scoot away. Um, but to mm-hmm. our majority women. Hi. Hi, girlies. <laughs> So specifically today, we're just talking about the scary parts of being a woman and specifically the things I think we can speak on um, through our own experiences or our friends, our family. And yeah, so we'll start off a little a little lighter, if you will. <laughs> just some casual, just some casual things, some casual scary things that happen. <laughs> Let's start off. Yes. With. If you don't do this also, I'm scared for you. I'm scared in general. (laughs) Yeah, I'm scared even talking about it. Um, If you aren't... It's like manifesting or something. Like, am I manifesting something? Oh, God. No. No, uh, I'm just kidding. That's terrible. Anyway, like one of the rules in like girlhood, girlhood, womanhood, (laughs) when you own your own car or like you're driving, before you get in the fucking car, check your motherfucking backseat do you question do you physically turn around or do you check the mirror i think it depends for me well first of all my experience starts outside of the car unless i'm terrified and like i'm running you're getting it yeah yeah Yeah. i first of all my windows are tinted so it's hard to see yeah so i'll open the door quickly look in oh for real you're good yeah i'm scared i'm scared i'm scared somebody's gonna like i just i just kind of i'm like if it happens i'm in here (laughs) (laughs) i'm not been kidding okay <laughs> um and then i get in and then i look in the mirror and then i do one of these real fast. <laughs> especially if i feel I'm weird sorry wait what do you think that's gonna like they're gonna jump <laughs> you're gonna scare know, them dude and then i get like these thoughts that like they're hiding like all the way over oh here, no yeah you know and i'm like you're real good if that's what you can do we're playing hide and seek right now like it literally is a game also i've never thought about like if there was actually someone there like what would i do if there was actually someone there yeah (laughs) but see that's the thing we don't learn self-defense no one's actually teaching 
women what to do in these scary situations no but i will say weirdly enough this morning i was listening to a crime junkies episode and this woman gets in her car and she's like she checked the outside of the car whatever gets in there's a man in the goddamn back seat and he's threatening her and it's like this whole thing and i'm like wow something like that reminds me that it does happen and i'm not crazy for checking yeah no no you're we're we're not paranoid like it happens to women right actually i do know what you're supposed to do you're supposed to turn on the car and ram the car like into anything because they'll fly out like they'll get hurt you might get hurt but like the driver is almost always safe (sighs) because airbags but this person will get hurt and that's the only way like if somebody is like hurting is trying to Mm, hurt you interesting you need to ram your car like it doesn't matter like just thinking like anything you know what i mean i'm just thinking like in la like you got like two inches in front of you (laughs) just fucking go dude just floor it if you're parked like in between sandwich and just fucking ram it maybe like turn the wheel a little if you can (laughs) i like laugh at things it's like part of my coping but i try not to laugh (laughs) i try not to laugh but it like what else am i gonna do right like it's just like it's it's like like, how to deal with that like we have to deal with all this right like a little right it's kind of funny i don't Uh, know it's not funny but it it makes me feel better that it can be left. Okay, going about, back to like a right. horror though. Like, mm-hmm. have you? I saw this one like reels or TikTok. I don't remember what it was, mm-hmm. but I sent it to Logan because I like freaked out. I should have sent it to all my friends. I don't know why I did it. Mm-hmm. But apparently, like in Pomona, there's this guy who like calls out like certain like things that traffickers are doing. Okay. Or just people in general mm-hmm. that are like malicious. Um, they'll put like a dollar bill in your windshield wipers for you to like pick it up or whatever and like mm. they'll either lace it with like fentanyl or like something to hurt you right Terrifying. yeah so just if you see a dollar <laughs> bill don't pick it up <laughs> there's so many things though like and like just I, like, keep driving and then yeah. when you're safely with someone else with gloves yeah or like people like have zip tied like car doors together things like that and like those are like signs to just fucking leave i'm going back into target if yeah walk in, back into what? target call the police and just like don't deal with it that Fuck is that. horrifying like constantly i think about like i guess this is in the train of like cars specifically like i'm not generally scared of like if i run an errand i'm not like oh my god someone might be in my back seat as i'm like walking to my car you know it's right. also like just such second nature that it's not really that scary anymore which is terrible but like the videos of women getting in their car and then a man quickly comes up and hijacks the car from them or it gets in the passenger seat and says drive me where i want to go with a gun to your head like crazy fucking shit and that's why when your car comes factory settings here's a pro tip you it's annoying but you should only have your driver door unlock when you unlock your car i need to do that yes because like yeah your friend's like come on open the car door me? for me right everyone i'm, like, I'm just double hit it fucking hit it already what are you doing but it, it's genuinely so helpful when you're somewhere scary and alone like they're not gonna get into the back because you opened your car door like nah yeah that's definitely something to do Yes. Like on your checklist, mm-hmm. your safety checklist. Do that, girl. Including myself, I need to do that. Yeah, dude. Checking the back seat, though, I will say I'm not that good at. <laughs> Sam, I do it, but I don't like. It's mostly at night. Number one, like during the day, I'm way less scared, which is maybe irrelevant, it's like irrational, right? It's like mm, there's it's sunlight. <laughs> the sun. The sun- <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, I'm kind of bad about checking the back seat. But when I'm driving home late at night, I'm looking at that mirror like someone's going to be in the back back. Oh, like in the trunk? In the trunk. Like just sitting. And I swear to God, I'll see like figures. Dude, I trip myself out. you just out. trip yourself out. I do. Yeah, it happens. It's not. It's happens not to fun. the best of us. <laughs> we just like imagine someone's scary in our back seats. Like genuinely, I can't even get into the men. The men psyche of that anyways next going on (laughs) walks and runs or just like being out and about physically exploring the world (laughs) yeah specifically alone but it also happens when you're with others um i'd say my first experience of like men being scary on the streets was when i was like i don't know 12 yeah me too like walking home from like middle school right walking with my friends to mcdonald's or whatever and men just like honking it's also like we look like children definitely like the justin bieber bangs were We're happening they were banging yeah i'm in the vicinity of a school (laughs) 
it's cool. literally i just went to school it's literally weird. it's like disgusting it's very yeah. pedophilic is that a word i don't know <laughs> Uh, yeah like one of my first memories is also like v- being very young and walking actually i have like two experiences like one was when i was in mexico i think i was like eight i decided to wear a skirt mm-hmm. and that actually really like traumatized me mm. i wore a skirt i didn't think anything of it why and would you you're eight years I old was, yeah i was walking with my um cousin home and men were so nasty and i was literally eight years old yeah made no sense and then for the rest of my life i like it remain- made me like think like when you go on a walk or you go like out in public on busy streets you shouldn't be wearing like a skirt right or something or shorts because like it's yeah. too much yeah i remember like in middle school walking like well, for whatever reason my friends and i just we love being out it's, you know it was the thing to do like at 12 years old i can't go out out so i'm gonna go out so i'm gonna go out and walk the streets yeah. of- i'm gonna be wearing my pajama shorts and a hoodie right like innocent enough but it's not because you're sexualized and then that leads into like you being in your own home and feeling sexualized in your outfit like yeah which it's not even an outfit i'm just trying to be comfy and in my little pajama shorts like i'm not trying to be sexy for my fucking family like no so stupid (sighs) yeah i mean it honestly and it doesn't even fucking matter what you wear. I remember I wore yeah. like a fucking, it was cold as fuck. And I was wearing a hoodie and jeans, like nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, yeah. you know, like angsty teen looking t- too tight jeans, like yeah. tube, tube angled jeans, two ankle, tubed angled oh, tubed. jeans, <laughs> jeans, like the tightest jeans that you could, not like on my ass. Okay. Like oh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Even if it was, I don't care. I'm fucking 12. No one right, cares. Right. Like I was wearing a hoodie. Why are you honking? Just like, I think my what? hoodie was on. Like how do you even, what are they even trying to, to do? do? What's the psyche? I, we can't get into it I in this episode, it. but like it's impeccable. The cat calling is weird. Yeah. And then I think from there, I probably yeah, like the innate fear yes the fear is just there and it's also just like stigmatized further by more men in your life so like i remember one time i went to i believe i was in tennessee with my boyfriend at the time and we're walking the streets like sightseeing and these two men are like visibly like staring at me and saying things like oh come inside like come into this bar or whatever which i was probably like 20 at the time and my boyfriend just did nothing which like i don't want him to start a fight or nothing no but just say or like tell me afterwards like i'm sorry he's being like yeah i got you like i'm sorry they're being weird i don't know but instead we just ignored it because probably made him insecure i don't know something stupid when i'm like i'm literally scared for my life that i'm gonna get pulled into this bar by these two big men that they're gonna fuck you up and then they're gonna take me away i'm scared that you can't do shit about this uh yeah and then just like in the day-to-day these days of like like on the day-to-day of like dating of just telling men like i'm going on a walk or whatever like i remember like a couple years ago or a year ago i would like snapchat guys whatever and not like showing them my walking outfit but obviously they could see what i'm wearing on this walk and they'd be like put some clothes on and i'm like i'm literally wearing spandex workout like shorts and a workout top sports bra like i'm not naked and i'm wearing a jacket around my waist like also like how much more clothes do you i'm literally covering every (laughs) private area that you want me like what are you talking about and it's like don't blame me right like what put some clothes on like i get it you don't want to put yourself in a situation to be at risk for anything happening and wearing less clothing but i'm sorry it's 105 degrees outside or something and and that's like not the fucking point like yeah like i'm trying to do something for myself here and not for everybody else his opinions or like whatever. meanwhile you can fucking go on a run with your shirt off right How, tell me that's fair and five inch inseam shorts Stupid. which i'm like thank you slay. those are slay. really cute running outfit <laughs> <laughs> but it's like the even on the days where i'm not wearing something ridiculous i'm wearing leggings and a hoodie on this walk and i'm like literally wearing a fucking hoodie and men are literally asking me to get in their car so that they could take me home i'm like who are you (laughs) i don't want to go to your house i don't want you to i don't want to be in your car i don't want to be anywhere near you Ugh. and just like even people who have um innocent intentions of like literally needing to pull to the side of the road you're scaring the shit out of me why are you pulling next to me yeah actually 
<laughs> don't pull up anywhere near me. Just pull up all the way over there. Pull, like, where I'm, you're not going to freak me out. I'm sure you can wait another half a mile. a mile, a mile, to pull to the side of the road. Thank you. It's just be considerate <laughs> literally i would never pull the side next to a woman by herself <laughs> be considerate i'd be yelling i have a flat tire it's okay i just need to pull over giving ted bundy though like you know what i mean i'm like don't stop though i got it girl i don't but i got it <laughs> <laughs> i feel like another piece of this is when you go to the gas station mm-hmm. yeah my dad always told me never go to the gas station at night by yourself yeah number one rule and i was like what and i never did even going with friends i'm like yo we good i know i mean if like my friends come over at any point and like they're like i need to get gas on my way home i'm like okay you're taking me to the gas station (laughs) closest one and then we're coming back to my house and you're dropping off you're not going by yourself like there's no fucking way in the middle of the night like i just it i always get gas before i get somewhere if i know i'm gonna be like late it's just too scary yeah yeah i mean i'll admit sometimes i have gone to the gas station at like you know the sun's down it's like 8 p.m or something that's fine like there's still people out but like mm-hmm. if it's like midnight and you're oh, like yeah. oh my god i need gas absolutely not like be on the phone with someone or something at something least at the very like, minimum but that's yeah. always so scary and i don't know sketchy things happen at gas stations in general yeah so back to dating i guess another scary part of strange men i was gonna say not even dating but like just being out <laughs> yeah true true part of like even going on walks so like denying men at whatever capacity if you're out at a bar and they make an advance and you say i'm good thanks or whatever there always has to like there's this feeling that you have to have a reason why you said no otherwise they won't leave you alone they won't leave you alone it's like no i I, i'm like actually telling you no and even if you have a reason though sometimes it seems like they still don't fucking take no for the answer Mm mm-hmm like i'm not single and they're like well i'll be bi-. like just shut up there's <laughs> there's no anything you need to say after that like yeah just take your l and go dude it's just so bad and it's just like scary because you don't know how people are gonna react you don't know sh- literal strangers at a bar or on the side of the street i mean you always hear like the horror stories of like men who like end up having like a retaliation mm-hmm. when women deny deny them them in clubs or bars or whatever like women will get i don't even want to say it but like they'll get hurt yeah harmed for just saying no Mm -hmm. i think that that's really instilled a lot of fear in all of us where we like have to say no i have a boyfriend even if you don't like you just say something Mm -hmm. and also as a queer woman having to there's different like versions of this i guess but even when i was single like even having to say a boyfriend because i feel like it's more intense than like saying i have a girlfriend i feel like it's because it's like protective even though it's like the same thing you know what i mean i feel like a sick man would be like oh it's a girlfriend and then then they continue the conversation of yeah, making I it mean, a fetish that definitely has happened we logan and i will just go out in public and i remember i think it was for like your birthday or something we were at um las bedlas um, mm-hmm. and wait she wasn't there that there time? was a time where she was i don't there. know if you were there then mm. i went to Las. we went to las pedlas and we were having a good time and this guy just comes up to us and goes hey how long have you guys been friends and we're literally like kissing and like holding each other like we're just having a nice like Night, evening right. together and she goes that's not my friend that's my girlfriend he goes oh well how long have you guys been together like just trying to like continue and like like who said i want to speak to you about us? any of this <laughs> yeah and we're like we're fucking good go on like move on and he just like continues to just fucking go at it mm-hmm. it just men ha- are a fucking issue. they're a special breed especially men like that like you have some fucking like there's something wrong in your brain like where you can't just take no for an answer no for an answer or like just take your fucking l and go dude like it's almost like you can't just like be embarrassed like mm-hmm. deal with it right it it they just they hope that they can turn the situation back around to like no i'm a good guy to like yeah that's what they want they want at the end of the day for you to be like oh no what actually you are a good guy even though i thought you were a creep it's not (laughs) even like a good guy thing it's just like to feed their ego that they're like whatever whatever your ego is like attaining to right yeah it's so fucking gross (laughs) and there's just like all these things we have to keep in mind on top of our like physical safety our emotional safety it's like why am i living in fear which like at this point I don't think I personally live in fear. It's just things that are normal for me to think about but, and worry about. But the fact that it's normal. Yeah. And that's other, not normal. And that like good guys are like, huh? Like that happens? 
And I'm like, yeah, it does happen. It's happening. And th that's like why it's important to speak about because the good guys need to know that it's happening so that they can be there when it does. I just, like, yeah. Like I was dancing the other at the boiler room event with Katie and these dudes were way too drunk trying to dance with us. And at first it was like, fine. It was like, cool. Like whatever. We'll give you like a little moment. But it's not fine. Like, I mean, it's not like clearly it's not like, and you're probably giving like physical, physical signs, signs that this like, is I'm not, not good. interested, but yeah. they continue. Right. And like, there's good guys behind us asking if we're okay. Like little things like that matter. Absolutely. So if you're listening and wondering how you can be helpful, just be vigilant. Help people who need help even if you have like an, a small inkling mm -hmm. even if you're wrong like yeah. at least the person that you're asking is probably going to feel helped yeah or like a, they're going to appreciate it seen. at some capacity seen yeah like i'm not invisible to this entire event like someone is paying attention to my safety oh my god i just like i forgot about this one situation mm -hmm. do you remember when we went to not you but like me and logan went to this concert oh yeah and some man that guy like mm -hmm. threatened to shoot us yes that was literally insane i fucking forgot about that <laughs> i did like traumatized me um that was like what is wrong with that man i just don't get it like and he wasn't like, sexually har like harmful or anything like he wasn't doing that but just like Certain men just take up space in a way that they really don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. And I don't I've never I don't think I've talked we talked about it when it happened, but like some man like tried to push me. He like got really like physically almost on top of me. Like he backed up into me and I was like, hey yo, like chill. And like I pushed him back because I was literally gonna fall and he's gonna step on my feet. And he just like took it overboard. And of course he was drunk or whatever, but like it's not an excuse and of course, a really nice gentleman behind mm -hmm. me was like, are you OK? And then he got into an alter altercation with like the other guy. And like, I just I didn't. It just puts me in a place where I feel really like guilty to like have to have guilty. Like not like that. I did anything, but that like this man is almost about to get in a fist fight or like get hit. Actually, he did hit him. His glasses fell off. I remember mm -hmm. now. Um, Yeah. Like he got hit in the face for just like def like making sure that i was okay mm -hmm. and like t trying to speak to this other man to be like yo relax like it's, it's all good like you don't have to like take it any further and he like just his I ego mean, was so hurt that it just kept fucking winding him up to the yeah. point where he was like threatening to shoot me i do hear you on like feeling guilty it's obviously not, you don't actually feel like it's my fault right yeah. um also i think not to say this guy was feeding his own ego by standing up for you but there's also that layer of like Sometimes a man will stand up just to be like, yeah, I'm a good guy. Maybe. Which, like, whatever. I don't care. Like, at that point, I don't care what his reason was. Like, no, I was for sure. I was so scared. Genuinely, regardless of why someone does it, like, you're a good guy. <laughs> like, you're a good guy in my so book. <laughs> um, uh, but, yeah, like, it's not your fault. And people are just, it's just unhinged. Insane. Literally unhinged. Like, why do you have a gun when you're out? Like, I get it. I get it. <laughs> Whatever the fuck your little reason is. Whatever. You're but like you're literally drinking and you're clearly irresponsible with your gun. Like, you're, sorry. You're there like, should be like ways to like give little, little strikes to people. Like, hey, that guy has a gun. Um, I want to figure out what his little number is. Whatever. Gun holder number. Whatever little, they're called. And put a strike, strike on it. Like acted irresponsibly. Yeah. That should be a thing. That should be a thing. Something like it. Mm -hmm. To report people. You can report it to the Bureau this person of Guns. <laughs> gets drunk and threatens people in yeah. public places I with think their gun. That would be fucking helpful. Anyway, I just that makes me like think about how no matter what we do, we're just trying to and when I say appease men, I'm not even just saying like to like flatter them. Like it's just literally to keep them out of fucking like mm -hmm. middle neutral ground, state. neutral state. Like yeah. no matter what, that is what women have been taught to do is like, don't get him too angry. Mm -hmm. Don't like overstimulate him. <laughs> don't fucking show him your collarbones because that's too fucking much. Yeah. No matter what we do, it's a fucking problem. Mm -hmm. Like literally stepping outside our doors is an issue. Yeah. I'm so exhausted. <laughs> it's like I, I don't often like sit down to think about how exhausting it is but mm -hmm. like holy fuck yeah like going through this maybe not checklist but like essentially some 
checklist experiences and things we do in our day to day that change how we function, men don't think about. Like men all. don't think, oh, I should get gas before because it's going to get dark by the time I want to get home. Or I need to leave because I can't check my back seat when it's that late at night or whatever. You know, like we all have our different things. Or like if it w- was or another like man you- that was pushing that other man, like it would have been a whole nother situation where yeah. they probably would have escalated you know and it would have been a blow up because men but like even then like as a woman you should have been able to be like don't fucking step on me dude that's it that's all i'm saying like i bet you i mean i don't know i that's i don't know how he would have reacted to a man but maybe more fucking like level fucking headed i don't fucking know Mm -hmm. it's just a fucking piece of shit i don't know anyway (laughs) yeah that's that's a specific person but it just makes me really think that like anything we do is something to consider or think about like constantly and we don't think about it so deeply because it's just engraved into our day-to-day yeah and how we were not necessarily raised but just like raised by society to like even our parents have dealt with these exact and like not to their fault but they just teach us these things to i mean what is have an easier safer experience experience in this life but it just sucks that that is the woman's experience is like dealing with these problems on a day-to-day like what is our dad supposed to do fucking get rid of all this sick evil twisted men in the world no they don't know how to do that (laughs) (laughs) or nobody knows how to do that yeah if we did we would have done it but it's just unfortunate that we have to live a majority of our life so scared that something's gonna happen to us out of our own control but like it's for a minority of men that exist out there i'd like to think minority of men i mean i mean i think to all like to some degree like the patriarchy really instills any anything like that to every man it's just more of like acting on acting on the urges of of these insane ideas that men entitlement and audacity are getting yeah men have (sighs) i mean not to get a little bit like deeper into this but i i I feel like I've asked every every woman that I've ever asked if they have been assaulted, like almost always it's with men. And they've always, all of them have been assaulted in some, some capacity. And that's also just another thing that I'm like, mm-hmm. not to say that men don't go through like assault. Oh yeah. But like to say that every woman that you probably know has been assaulted is insane. Like, mm-hmm. and that's like, prob- that's most likely the truth. Yeah, I'd say a majority of the women I know have been assaulted at some capacity. Do you know one that has it? I think so. I don't know. I think there's also like layers to, not to say that that person has, but right. there's layers to things where like, I believe a it. lot of people don't, a lot of women don't acknowledge that the certain things that happened to them were assaults. Mm-hmm. And that's another problem. Oh, like yeah. we are taught to dumb down the situation <laughs> or like blame yourself or blame yourself and make it like oh well i shouldn't have been there i shouldn't have been wearing that i shouldn't, I shouldn't have drank so much yeah. it's always our problem our reasoning for why it happened to us versus it just happened because right this person was a fucking asshole yeah i yeah. think it's it is definitely something to note thinking about the amount of women that have been assaulted and either aren't getting help for it because they don't acknowledge it or don't get help for it because they're blaming themselves or just the fact that it happened (laughs) like yeah and also assault ranges from so many different things like the smallest level of assault that i've experienced is i mean i don't know maybe not the smallest level ever but like the one that comes to mind is being at a bar and i'm pretty sure the employee there was cracked the fuck out and on drugs but as i'm walking out with like i'm with a group of people with my boyfriend at the time and the man pulls my ponytail and says he wants to just fuck me from behind and i'm like literally in shock like what do i even i just keep walking out of the bar like i don't even say anything to the man it's like you can't i literally can't i'm like just get out that's the solution right now and as soon as i got out of the bar i felt safe again and i was like that man just did that to me and it sucks when you're with people that not that i i expect anyone to like do anything but it felt like everyone was just so drunk that it was like what like i can't believe that happened and then on the flip side of like i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna beat him up it's like you're not helping at all like you should (laughs) have i mean like 
shoulda woulda coulda like yeah the situation already played out like that happened to me yeah and i think like the reaction there is also like i'm gonna fuck him up like that doesn't help me right can you just worry about can you ask what i need yeah like what because if you said what do you need and i said go fuck him up that's then different okay. yeah, I'm not even fuck him up. like maybe just fucking give me a hug tell me that was disrespectful and like i'm really do you want to go home now anything, anything but no but no it's about your fucking masculinity and how you need to show up because this is your girl this is your property right literally is what they fucking believe in their little brains anyway so that's the wrong way to respond if that happens i think asking what someone needs in a situation like that is the The most um yes the best because it just puts the importance on the person that it happened to versus how you're gonna react to it you know like who did it like who who cares about that person right now like i mean like yes we care but I don't know and there's just like also under reporting like let's talk about under reporting did i report that man no, no. i could have reported him to even just the oh, bar girl. and said like hey your fucking dude's assaulting women as they walk in and out of this fucking joint and like then there's the guilt of why didn't i why didn't i report him why haven't i spoken about it why 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 fucking why but like why is it my job why are men just not respectful why the fuck do we have to deal with all this guilt and shame for literally existing and also by ourselves truly the only time that we aren't by ourselves in feeling all of that is when we tell another woman right who understands because that's really it Mm -hmm. but even then like you feel so alone in that experience because it yeah it's just not to be a little kid but it's just not fair (laughs) it's not though (sighs) but like it's our reality i'm like insert men saying never mind (laughs) what saying what saying the dumbest shit well like you should just like not do this and do that don't go don't go drinking sam (laughs) stop having fun stop being irresponsible like i am stop wearing a ponytail (laughs) oh my god literally literally so why am i wearing a ponytail at a bar also like in a baseball cap You're probably on, like, the dikiest mode. That's why I'm telling you, like, it has them. nothing to do with you, what you're wearing. Sick I'm men, dude. <sighs> uh, and that's why I don't date them anymore. <laughs> Just kidding. Just fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, of course not, no. Um, but, yeah, I just, we felt like it was really important to share maybe s- the snippet of our experiences. And if you can relate. I'm sorry. I'm sorry um but also educate yourself whether you're a man or a woman to help yourself in this situation and start checking that back seat i know it's scary i know it's a lot but like it's part of our lives at this point just it's just want to keep yourself safe also i don't know if i've talked about this before but having a if i go missing folder is super important um give it to someone you love and or like have some like crazy like indiana jones fucking puzzle shit or something where it's like if i go missing here's the passcode to this lock box and everyone has all my stuff i don't know whatever (laughs) whatever your life is like you know right whatever (laughs) i'm like my lips a movie um but like maybe we should you should we should all host like a if i go missing party yeah (laughs) like putting together and it's also also a a murder mystery (laughs) oh my god <laughs> just so dark That's kind of fun too. though <laughs> kind of a vibe um but like making them together it's kind of cute um uh, and then giving each other a copy mm-hmm. you know yeah and it's literally just like bank account passwords and information Me you having your like, social f- filing cabinet of Dude. all my friends <laughs> 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 looking for everyone but it's good like apple id it's just the things it's important though because i feel like if if those things un- god forbid that it happened like it was just like one step closer to it finding expedites you. It's, the process yeah like the barriers to entry to find you for certain phones or like mm-hmm. things you know that reminds me of the case of like the woman the not the woman the little girl who like got kidnapped and literally by her nintendo switch they found oh. her have you heard not heard heard about that, that? sounds super yes I the did. man I took her like her across name, yeah. across states so like there was a reason why they couldn't find her but because he after he like 
kidnapped her and he would like let her play her switch and like that was it and like obviously like she it's signed into the wi-fi or nintendo whatever yeah it, because it like logged on they could figure out I, like how smart though like wh- whoever like whatever investigator whoever was, was like, like she's got her switch she has her switch what is the code to whatever i don't know you know whatever what I mean? that science, just science technology. behind there and you know I also think about that movie. It's it's new. It's the daughter from Euphoria. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ruth's sister. Yeah, Ruth's sister. Not her name in real life. Um, she's home alone. Her mom goes missing with her new boyfriend, and she's just logging into her Google's, getting her address. I wanted to using a robo guy. What a bit. What are they called? robo robo task task fi- task rabbit task rabbit <laughs> jesus christ yeah <laughs> she was using like a task rabbit in this other country it's, it was just crazy like all the things that she could do sitting at home as the cops are doing almost nothing it's like police force <laughs> Y'all really need to, like, hire, like, coders and, like, smart people. I mean, I'll What say are you doing? Some, like, some of the case, like, I listen to true crime, like, nobody's business. Obviously, some cases, you're like, hell yeah, they did that shit. Like, they- Of course, but more often than not, it's yeah, not that. They've fell through the cracks, for sure. Anyway, we're getting into a different topic. Yeah. Which- Point being, women, <laughs> stay fucking safe out there yeah and i'm sorry but this is the world we have to live in hopefully it doesn't have to be this forever yeah and you know if you choose to have children um us having these like very open conversations and wanting to like raise better men and having good partners who understand these things it'll slowly slowly be a safer place for us and our daughters and you know mothers and whatnot <sighs> just think about the handmaid's tale too oh we we cannot go on that i know that we shit can't is... that's too much when i read that <laughs> shit in high school my shit was my mind was blown <laughs> the other day i was like logan if the handmaid's tale ever happens it's so funny they brought it up because i like literally <laughs> talked about this like yesterday i was like if it, that ever happened like we would have to date For, like our oh. friends like our gay friends like i was like i'll take him i mean you'd be lucky him. you'd be lucky if you got your two gay friends in the handmaid's tale like oh, they got fucked no like terrible we're, pretend, we're, we're, we're pretending oh you were just pretend oh okay okay, okay, okay. Yeah. i got you you guys are like we're going to canada yeah we're, we're chilling we're like this like, is my boyfriend this is my boyfriend they're like you just look a lot of like <laughs> shut up no i get the other one you get the other one okay <laughs> um yeah <laughs> that was just my tangent <laughs> that i was like well we'll we'll have like the partners and then the partners give you the partners you know what i mean you help each other out it's mutually so, beneficial it's fine just, you know gay it, girl uh, gay girls just get with your gay get your gay guys and then we're, we're safe have have a if we go not if we go missing but if <laughs> the handmaid's tale happens this is what we're doing okay escape plan escape plan nice anyway um yeah this is, this is the end of, this is it this is the end of the episode it was dark it was hard to talk about and a bit triggering to be honest mm-hmm. but yeah overall great conversation and i'm again i'm sorry if you relate because it sucks but you know we're here with you and we're living life in in hopes of better days Better, better days, days. better days better days for sure yeah and so with that we're just gonna leave you and please tune into this week's glowing hour we are having a guest yes um and it's gonna be a lot of fun in a similar topic not so scary but more happy heartfelt and happy and childlike yeah anyway we'll catch you then see ya bye, bye.